Okay. So everybody should be sitting on page 67 for notes. Our objective today is that we're going to continue to learn about the law of conservation mass, which we just reviewed, and we will continue to talk about. And we're going to learn how to balance equations. And the reason we balance equations is because we need to follow the law of conservation mass. The equations have to be written in the form that are following the law. So, by the end of this period, you should be able to answer our essential question, which is, why don't we balance equations by changing coefficients and not subscripts? So, by looking at our essential question, we know that we're going to have to review two words that we've already talked about. We already talked about coefficients and subscripts whenever we we're writing chemical formulas. So, who thinks they can remember what the difference between is, or what a coefficient is? So, let's start with coefficient. Yes. A coefficient is like the number in front of an element, and a subscript is the tiny number of elements. Okay. And what is, who can tell me, what is the big number in front of a compound tell you? What is that telling you? What is that number showing you? Telling you or showing you? Yes. How many molecules of that, of that compound are there? Very good. How many molecules do you have of that compound? So if I say 3H2O, that 3 is a coefficient because it's a big number. And that 3 is telling me that I have 3 molecules of water. Okay? Now, the subscript, Cindy said that they're the little numbers. So what are the little numbers telling us? Okay. You didn't see, I'm sorry? Um, Very good. How many you have, how many atoms you have of that atom? So if I say H2, that tells me I have 2 hydrogens that are stuck together. Okay? So... Our essential question is, why when we balance, we only change coefficients and not subscripts? So, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at changing a coefficient versus changing a subscript. What does changing a coefficient do compared to changing a subscript? So, we're going to look at a very simple chemical formula that everybody in here knows. H2O. H2O is what? Water. 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 Okay? So, we know it's water. And H2O is a compound, and that compound tells us that I have two hydrogens and one oxygen all stuck together. So these th those three atoms are bonded together. Who remembers what type of bond H2O is? Is it covalent or is it ionic? Uh, covalent. Covalent. And why is it covalent? Because both of them are non-metals. Very good. Because both of them are non-metals. So we know it's covalent because both of them are non-metals. Okay? Now... We're going to look at how does H2O change if we add a coefficient compared to how does H2O change if we add a subscript. So, we're going to add some twos in there. So, I'm going to add a two as a coefficient, so the big number in front, and a two as a subscript, so the little number. So, now let's look at what... How did that change by looking at changing coefficient and subscript? So if I look at this first one, I had a 2 in front of H2O. That 2 tells me I have two H2Os. So here I have H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen bond together. Two hydrogens, one oxygen bond together, and I have two of these. These two are not attached. Do you see how they're, I didn't attach them with any line? Okay, they're not attached. They're just two of them there. So I have two water molecules here. Now if I add a subscript, what that means is that now I have two hydrogens, two oxygens, all stuck together. So I have my two hydrogens here, I have my two oxygens, and they're all attached. So these are all attached. Those are not attached, these are. So when you do a subscript, you're saying that those atoms are attached somehow. If you do a coefficient, you're just saying you have two of those. Okay? Does everybody see the difference between these? Yeah. Okay. Now, basically, what that is showing me is that I have two water molecules. So I have two waters, two water molecules. But if I put a two in there as a subscript, now I don't have one molecule. I have one hydrogen peroxide molecule. So, what is the difference between adding a coefficient compared to adding a subscript? What happened to the compound? 
They let me know. So tell me, how, how did it change? So the number changed. So this second time, the second one's not water. No. So it's a, it's a complete new substance. Yeah. Okay. You really want to know how did how it really really changed? You know why water? You know water. We all drink it. We all need it. It's part of our it's part of our body, right? Yeah. By me adding that little two there, I turned into a hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. Complete new substance. That just said complete new compound. That if I drink it in large amounts, will kill me. So, <laughs> I added this too. I need this. I can add three, four, five, six, I'll probably add a whole bunch of those because I drink, you know, large amounts of water. Okay? I need this. If I add this, you die. I die. <laughs> so, I need to live. I die. So, do you see how big of a difference you can make if you add a subscript instead of a coefficient? Yes. 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 So, uh, Oscar, can you explain to me why we do not add subscripts? Very good, because it makes a new compound. Okay? Well, in this case you can die, but not always, okay? Uh, Joanna, so can you explain to me why we do not add subscripts? Because it makes a new compound. Very good. So you need to, why do we do not add new subscripts? Because it adds a new compound. So, we can't make new compounds. We can only add what we already have. Okay? Which leads us into the balancing part. So when we balance equations, the rules for balancing equations are that we only change coefficients and now we know why. We know that we can change coefficients than we, because we can put more stuff of the same thing in there. But we can never, never, ever, 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 do not at all, ever, change subscripts. And we cannot change subscripts because of why, Jackie? Because it makes a new compound. And we can't change the compound. Now, so we only change coefficients, we never change subscripts, and what we're trying to do when we balance equations is that we are trying to get the same amount of each element on the reactant side equal to the product side. So if I have five oxygens on the reactant side, I'm going to have five oxygens on the product side. If I have ten hydrogens on the reactant side, I'm going to have ten hydrogens on the product side. And the reason for it is because the law of conservation of mass says that I can't create or destroy anything. Meaning, what I put into it, I have to get out of it. It might not look the same, but it's still, but it's still going to be the same amounts. Okay? So, this is where we're going to need some colors. Wait this for a second, I'm going to put back on it. We're going to balance an equation by drawing the molecules and we're going to use three different colors to represent our three elements. So you don't have to use the same three colors that I did. You can just use your three. Just make sure that you have a key. So I have a green dot for carbon. I have a red dot for hydrogen. And I have a purple dot for oxygen. And we are going to look at this equation right here. So looking at my equation right there, I have one molecule of CH4, which is methane gas, reacting with one molecule of oxygen to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of, of water, of H2O. So that's a chemical equation. I wrote it down. Okay? Now, the first thing you're going to do when you look at a chemical equation, you're going to make sure that that chemical equation follows the law of conservation of mass. G7, can you tell us again what the law of conservation of mass is? Mm -hmm. You can't change. Yeah, you can't change mass. Well, you can change it, but you can't. I 
can change the way it looks, but what can I not do? Yeah, yes, by all means. So we can change it, but we cannot do what? In other words, right, you say, so you said there's two oxygens on the reactant side. So now look at the product side. How many oxygens are there? Okay. So how many are right here? Okay. And this one? Yeah, so this is one, which would equal three. So, Jackie's right. This doesn't follow the law of conservation of mass. Wait, that O equals three? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Because she's saying that there's two oxygen on the reactive side. We all agree with that, right? And then on the product side, here you have two, and here you have one, right? So, if I have two, and this is a plus, plus means to add, right? So 2 plus 1 gives me 3. So it doesn't follow the law of conservation of mass, right? So we're going to have to do something that we call balancing the equation. We're going to have to add some subscript to make sure that it's following the law of conservation of mass. But before we do that, I'm going to require you for today's activity to draw the molecules. Because when you draw the molecules, it's very easy for you to tell if it is balanced or not. So. We're going to draw the molecules first. So, if you look at this, I have one molecule of CH4. That CH4 tells me that I have one carbon and four hydrogen set together. So I have four red dots for hydrogen and one carbon, and I have them all joined by lines. Okay? This is showing me that one carbon and four hydrogens are bonded together. So they're stuck together. So that's CH4. Then plus, I have O2. That two tells me that those two oxygens are stuck together. That's oxygen gas. So with O2, with O2, you have two oxygens stuck together, which means you're going to have two purple dots stuck together. Produces. Remember that arrow means produces, makes, or yields. One Cl2. So one carbon and two oxygens stuck together. Plus H2O. One uh, oxygen and two hydrogens stuck together. So that is just a pictorial representation, a visual representation, of the chemical equation that we want to balance. Now, very quickly, we already said that Jackie said that this is not balanced because you have 
two oxygens on the reactive side and three oxygens on the product side, right? But now when you look at it in pictures, isn't that easier to see now? Do you have the same colors, the same amount of colors on both sides? No. No. I can very quickly come over here and see. I have four reds over here, and I only have two over here. That's not equal. I have one green and one green. That's okay. I have two purples and three purples. That's not okay. So when you do with pictures, it is, it's very quick for you to be able to tell, oh, that's not balanced at all. So today we're going to practice that by doing the pictures, but eventually you won't have to do the pictures because you're going to get so good at it that you just look at the chemical equation and you're able to add the numbers. Okay? So, if we look at this and we want to balance this, are we going to do anything with the CH4? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are? Add a 2 coefficient. I'm going to add 2 here. Oh, no. But one. Oh. Only, only how many greens do I need? Oh, so this no. adds like one and one, two. right? I can't do that, right? I don't have to. I have one green. So do I need to do anything to this one? No. 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 Okay? So, hmm. But I do have four reds. Oh, I And how many do I have over here? Two. two. Now, can I add a subscript? No. No. Why no. do I not add subscripts? Because I changed the change compound. Yeah. So I can't change this compound, right? But can yeah. I add one more of these? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through, and I'm going to add one of those. So now do I have four reds? Yeah. Yes. All right, so am I balanced now? No. No. What is not equal now? The oxygen. The oxygen, because those are the purple ones, correct? Yeah. So how many oxygens do I have on the product side now? Four. Four. And how many do I have on the reactive? Two. Two. So can I add one more of these? So add a substitute. I can add sub. I mean, coefficient. add another coefficient, which means I would have two of those, right? So if I do that and I draw one more, now looking at my pictures there, now is this following the law of conservation of mass? Yes. Yes. So now we have to actually <laughs> write it correctly. So looking at my picture, how many CH4s do I have? One. One. So that stays the same. Plus. How many oxygen O2s do I have? Two, three, two. One, two. So two O2s. <laughs> Produces, how many CO2s do I have? One. One. And then how many H2Os do I have? Two. Now, after drawing them, I'm now going to add these two numbers in there. And now I have my fall the law of conservation of mass? Yes. And I can check myself. I have one C, one C. I have four H's. Two times two gives me four H's. I have four O's. Two times two gives me four O's. Well, I have two here, and I have two there, so two plus two gives me four. Okay? So this is a process of balancing equations. Now, for today, I'm going to ask you to do the drawings, okay? After today, you can just balance just with numbers without doing the drawings, unless you want to do the drawings to help you out, all right? So, can you do me a favor? Pause the video, or stop the video just with that, right now.